benefits from the treatment must be able to acknowledge that they did receive treatment, they did receive help, and they must be able to show gratitude for it in some way or form or fashion. So if it is not me, this is why Christ said, go down, do likewise. When he heal people, when he help people, he doesn't go, I show mercy to you, you go and show mercy to somebody else. Always brought them as part of the process. You understand? And so this is what we need to do for people. Our people are just going to ride, um, ride off into the sunset, and um, laugh their heads off, and nobody's going to benefit. And what you did to them is not going to be reciprocated. So you bring them, um, let them understand their personal accountability to help others as well. And this is why Christ spoke and did as he did. Go down and do uh, likewise. Yeah. Now, is that like how poor didn't do sometimes, you know, like if you give somebody a book that's free and sometimes they just like toss it because it didn't cost them anything. Correct. They don't they appreciate just, it. They don't appreciate it. It's the Correct. same thing. A lot of times when you do something for somebody, you help them and you're like, they didn't give you any money and they didn't feel that you did anything. So they don't, they don't think they had to extend themselves. You must put a value to your labor. Yeah. yeah. Must right. always put a value to your labor. You must allow people to know that this is your time, this is your effort, this is your energy. And you have value, yeah. and so when people um, when people don't recognize your value, they would uh, take you for granted. And so mm -hmm. you must always put a, a value mm -hmm. to your labor, to your time, to your very presence. You are worth something. All right. If you die, somebody is going to cry. Somebody is going to be hurt. Somebody is going to be broken. So it is not that we are not it. nobodies. We are somebody. And you must always add um, time, effort, and set a value. To, to your labor, what you do, um, what you say, and sometimes you have to emphasize it. The way you think, way you think God in the Bible keeps repeating himself, I am the Lord and thy God. Mm -hmm. I am God. Mm -hmm. Where you would identify himself to the prophets that don't know him, Moses, no God, and God still saying, mm -hmm. I am God. Mm -hmm. You gotta understand who you are talking to, who you are dealing with. He is reminding people of his value. Mm -hmm. All right, and we have to do it. We must do it. We must do it. Our people will take you for granted, and they will not appreciate um, what you are doing. Mm -hmm. So that is very important. That is a very important lesson to learn. Now, the next question that is posed is, what are the laws of health? And we are going to see um, from... We're going to see from the pen of inspiration what are the laws of health. And there are a few quotations that identify this. I know we typically read Ministry of Healing, page 127, paragraph 2. It says, pure air, sunlight, abstemiousness, rest, exercise, proper diet, the use of water, trust in divine power. These are the true remedies. So she includes as the true remedies pure air. Sunlight, rest, exercise, um, temperance, abstemiousness, proper diet. She never said vegan. She said proper diet. And that's a, that, that, that is quite important. Proper diet is then going to be principle based as what God's original diet is, but also individual based. Based on several thousand years of sin, how my body responds to certain things. All right? And so then there may be something that are, are specifically necessary for me as an individual to live. You don't worry about me. I, 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 I got myself under control. We have water. She said, proper diet and trust in God. Ah, I really trust in divine power. And I want to emphasize the trust in divine power. Which is powerful. And we're going to see why. Now, so she said, those are the true remedies. 
Those are the true remedies. This is what we call new, new start, God's plan, and so on and so forth. But what I want to do is also read a few other uh, quotations that identify what are the true remedies because she qualified all of these things by the phrase true remedies. So these are the true remedies. So I want to read to you some other quotations that are usually forgotten uh, about what are the true remedies. And it says, there are many ways of practicing the healing art. This is uh, volume 5 of the Testimonies, page 443. This is paragraph 1. 5C, 443, paragraph 1. There are many ways of practicing the healing art, but there is only one way that heaven approves. God's remedies are the simple agencies of nature. So what are God's remedies? Simple agencies of nature. So she's qualifying what these remedies are. And the remedies are going to be the simple agencies of nature that will not tax or debilitate the system through their powerful properties. And she continues to mention a few. Pure air and water, cleanliness, a proper diet, purity of life. Mm. And the firm trust in God are the remedies for the one of which thousands are dying. Yet these remedies are going out of date because their skillful use requires work that the people do not appreciate. Fresh air, exercise, pure water, and clean, sweet premises are within the reach of all with but little expense. But drugs are expensive, both in the outlay of means and in the effect produced upon the system. What did she include there that she didn't include, that wasn't included in the first quotation that we read? Premises. Clean, sweet premises, cleanliness. She said these are the true remedies, so she's qualifying what the true remedies are. You know, as I like to tell people, uh, God's principles are always the same. God doesn't change. So if I use uh, a proof text method to read the Bible, then I come to the understanding of what the truth is and to build a correct doctrinal framework, when it comes to things like these, although it might seem slight in certain people's lives, I have to use the same proof text method. You understand? I have to listen to the words that are being used and uh, uh, clearly uh, identify um, the qualifications for the statements that come uh, prior or after. So she called these true remedies. But she includes clean, sweet premises. She includes cleanliness. So the true remedies are the simple agencies of nature. So let me tax your brain. What is the really the most prominent law of health that you see in the Old Testament? Trust. Huh? Cleanliness. Cleanliness. Give an example. The temple. The, the ground had to be clean. Everything had to be clean. Or God would not have come there. The animals had to be clean animals. Mm -hmm. The house. Everywhere had to be clean. They could even have intercourse with each other and roll up in the sanctuary afterwards. You had to clean yourself or be out for seven days. You couldn't have menstruation. Seven days, you're out. You could have touched that, that animal seven days, so God kept emphasizing cleanliness, 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 cleanliness. This is why you don't stop here, because then I'll be just ignoring the painfully obvious. Because if I have a wound and I go to the hospital, what is the first plan of defense? Keep that wound clean. Keep, you, don't, you don't even have to apply nothing. Keep the wound clean. Keep it clean, keep it clean, keep it clean, keep it clean, keep it clean. You don't have to apply nothing. If you don't have a herb, if you don't got a salve, if you don't got nothing, you just keep it clean. Keep it clean because once it is kept clean, the body is able to do its work. So we know that this is how the physical organism is structured. So when the doctor cuts you open and goes in, he has to make sure he is clean in order to deal with you because if brother is not clean or sister is not clean, guess what? Mm -hmm. Septic shock infection somebody's going to die so you can see basic fundamental rule of health is cleanliness and this is why she includes it in this quotation so i don't have no nice acronym to give you you understand <laughs> all i can tell you is cleanliness clean sweet premises clean bodies uh, and cleanliness goes far and it goes deep, so we have to practice cleanliness. Everything must be clean. So if my hand's dirty and they're cooking good, healthy food, you're not making it. Um, 
You really can't rest. You know, I can't sleep on a, a, a dirty sheet. <laughs> I can't sleep on a dirty sheet. I can't sleep in a dirty bed. I can't sleep in a dirty room. I just like, nah, I, it, it must be clean, clean. So if your ear is not clean, you got a problem. All right? The air here is not pure. Uh, it's not pure. <laughs> Y'all got some issues. <laughs> if you exercise and don't wash off. Then if you exercise, you, you auto intoxicate yourself if you don't wash off the, 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 the sweat. All right? So everything at some point is based on cleanliness. If the water is not clean and pure, guess what's going to happen? You can drink 10 glasses a day. You can be 10 times sicker. Because that water was not clean. So this is a fundamental principle that people uh, forget. And yes, we remember it um, inadvertently, but what you want to identify it as a law of health. It is what it is. It is a law. It is a fundamental principle of health. I want to read another quotation. This is volume 2 of Selected Messages. And 289 paragraph 2. It says... The Lord has provided antidotes for diseases in simple plants, and these can be used by faith with no denial of faith. For by using the blessings provided by God for our benefit, we are cooperating with him. This also answers uh, the question of why we just can't pray the disease away and be healed. And so it is not a denial of faith to apply the laws of health for healing, um, and in this situation, she is directly talking about uh, the antidotes for diseases in simple plants. And these can be used by faith with no denial of faith. So it is an act of faith to apply a herb to a situation. That is, that is faith, because faith is based on evidence. And the evidence is, my plant that I'm about to use, its molecular structure and how it interacts with the human body, tells me that when it is applied, it's going to boost my immune system. That's evidence. Faith is based on evidence, not simply just demonstration. And so this is what we this is what we know um, when we are speaking of faith, we are exercising faith still. He can use water. For by using the blessings provided by God for our benefit, we are cooperating with him. He can use water and sunshine and the herbs which he has caused to grow in healing maladies brought on by indiscretion or accident. We do not manifest a lack of faith when we ask God to bless his remedies. Mm -hmm. True faith will thank God for the knowledge of how to use these precious blessings in a way which will restore mental and physical vigor. So what else does she call a true remedy just now? What else does she just call a true remedy? Are you, are you want me to read it again? <laughs> The Lord has provided antidotes for diseases in simple plants, and these can be used by faith with no denial of faith. For by using the blessings provided by God for our benefit, we are cooperating with him. He can use water and sunshine and the herbs which he has caused to grow in healing maladies brought on by indiscretion or accident. We do not manifest a lack of faith when we ask God to bless his remedies. remedies. True faith will thank God for the knowledge of how to use these precious blessings in a way which will restore mental and physical vigor. So what is the net one of the other things that she called a true remedy? Our herbs. herbs. Herbs don't fit in as food. Alright? Or in proper diet. Although herbs can be part of the diet, but you can apply a herb specifically as an antidote to a disease. That's too powerful. So this is an antidote. You need this. So when you go through the prayer spirit of prophecy, you don't find nothing else. What she calls, if you run through remedies on any of the apps, you're going to find all that are mentioned under true remedies: air, sunlight, rest, exercise, temperance, proper diet, water, trust in divine power, cleanliness, herbs. Uh, so on and so forth. So these are the true remedies. Now, so and the true remedies, but notice that she also used this phrase, the simple agencies of nature. And I want you to tell me what are the other simple agencies of nature that we may have um, forgotten. 
that, that, that are not specifically mentioned. So you got the main staff, you want to identify the ancillary staff now. What are the other simple agencies of nature? Think about it. You know it already. What are the other simple agencies of nature that bring healing um, beyond, beyond these ten solid laws that just happen to be ten, just like how the commandments are ten? So I'm robbing God of two. Like how Catholicism of rob God of two. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, <laughs> what a terrible comparison. <laughs> what are the other simple agencies of nature that we can use to bring healing? All right. Sister Kelly, you asked me about it? Play. Oh, good. All right. So, you got clays, you have mud, you have sand. You understand? Healing. healing. It can bring healing. Powerful. Go ahead, my brother. Salt. And on the topic of salt, you have sea. These are the simple agencies of nature, all naturally occurring in nature. All right? So, let me, let me, let me put the sign here too. So this, I'm, I'm just allowing to understand what is in your arsenal, what it can do. Charcoal is one of them. Yeah, yeah, charcoal. Um, that will come under herbs. Yeah. Well, charcoal is a tree. Yeah, it's a bird. So you can put that under herbs. Oh. All right, because it's a tree. Oh. So um, sugar it comes from a tree. <laughs> you put That's honey? food. That's food. Do you put honey? Huh? Honey would be considered food. So yeah, honey is still under honey is still under food. Honey is still under food. All right, bee pollen, honey. So that's still under food. But there, you know, there are the other things that we can use when you go to the sea. It detoxifies the body. All right, it detoxifies the body. When you go to the sea, it massages the body. The amount of currents that are in the sea, there are levels and levels and levels of currents. There are currents at the top. You look at the sea, you can see the wind blowing a current over the top, and then you see another current on the going the next way, and then when you go down, you see feel all currents. What those currents do, they massage your body, they calm your nervous system, they make you a calmer individual. All at the same time, there's also electricity in that water. The action of um, sunlight, Electrolytes, ocean, a movement of uh, uh, currents uh, that are in the water is generating electricity and it's pulling um, low, it, it's high energy in the water and it, because it's high energy and your body is a lower energy, it's pulling toxins out of your body. Mm -hmm. That's how it does it. Wow. So last time you go to the sea, well, you know, really care. maybe we go to the sea all the time and maybe we go to the beach, no start to run naturally. That's because that's that process of hydrolysis that um, I just um, explained to you as well. And so it, 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 it pulls stuff out of you. That's the purpose of the sea. It's not just there. And then the quality of air at the sea as well is charged with a lot of negative ions. Powerful. So that's good um, to heal uh, uh, the, the, the body, good to clear uh, the mind. And as, as I said, the water relaxes the muscles, calms the nervous system, detoxifies the body. You just went to the sea. <laughs> you understand? So and go. The, and the color of the, the water from the sea. Oh, it's calming. Calming. Very calming. Yeah, the blue. Would Red. you put stone with sand as well? Hmm? Would you put stone as, along with sand? You can use stones because you can use. Um, the Bible talks about he walking in the midst of the stones of, of fire, and, and there's stuff that you can do with stones um, in terms of uh, you can apply hot stones to the body, you know, you can get a, a, a fix a fix a so like, or you got, you put, instead of buying a heating pad, if you don't got a heating pad, get a stone, heat it up, and put it there. Just don't burn the individual. Mm -hmm. So there you have options. So if we historically go back and see how uh, the things that were done in the uh, ages past, you realize that nature was really used 
to assist people. And I praise God for technology, but you want to be able, we want to be able to blend technology and nature together. You had your hand up. Yeah, you, as you were talking about the speed, you brought this to mind. I don't know if this is a major a simple age difference of nature, but is massage? So massage is actually passive exercise. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you call that passive exercise because you're exercising individual strands of muscles. You're moving them. And so, therefore, um, that massage comes under passive exercise. Yeah, so there's okay. dynamic exercise where you do it, but massage, somebody else is doing it to you, but they're exercising that, those individual groups of muscles. Um, so, that's, that's where massage comes under. Um, earths, we know the benefits of clay or mud, uh, or, uh, but it must be clean, though. It always must be clean if you're going to use it. Um, you, you know the benefits of salt. You can rub salt in the skin for exfoliation purposes to open up the pores, to increase blood flow, increase lymphatic flow, um, or salt rubs and salt glows uh, to lower blood pressure as well. Excellent. Uh, and you can do the same thing with sand. If you don't have salt, uh, you can do sand as well. Uh, and there's a lot of stuff that you can do. You can get very creative, but these are also very simple agencies of nature that people tend to take um, for granted. Walking on wet grass with bare feet. All right, that helps to stimulate circulation in the foot. It helps to calm the nerves as, as well. So wet grass, bare feet. Excellent. Simple things. Sister Beverly. Uh, two comments. Remember you were talking about cleanliness. I was thinking about, you know, for true um, trust in God. Remember no, we never, we never got trust in God there. Yeah, the, but the, the Lord said, <laughs> the Lord said, you know, your sins have separated you from me. Correct. So if your heart is not clean, then that trust in God is not. Correct. That, 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 it is connected. Yeah. But we're going to get there. Thank you for reminding me. But the other thing I was thinking about, like, you know, like in Jamaica, we walk on the dirt barefooted, so, mm. but it's not wet, it's dry, so, I mean. Wet, as dry. As wet as the wet grass. So, um, yeah, yeah, I mean, it, you see, you are in contact with this. Again, we are electrical human beings. You understand? We are electrical human beings. We have electrical currents flowing through our body. So when we come in and there's electricity in the earth, you can stick a, a rod in the ground and you can you can conduct electricity from the earth. You all know this, right? Yeah. These are the things that Nikola Tesla was talking about. Um, and so on and so forth. There's electricity coming from the earth. And so when you uh, walk barefoot on grass and walk barefoot on mud, it's grounding. Is, you know, you know, you never felt like scattered. Mm -hmm. It's just like, you know, like you're gonna go and sleep with the, the cell phone in the bedside of you. Do you get the same nice, calm, sweet rest? I know, I know, I say I don't, I don't. But um, walking barefoot, it literally helps to ground you. That may sound a little esoteric, but it helps to ground you. You understand? Sometimes we just need grounding. <laughs> so much noise in our life. So much things going on, so much drama, you just need to go and let the little children wait in a puddle of water, calm yourself. We need it. This is why rest. Rest is a law of health, and there's many ways to sleep, assume rest. And that's why the law of health does not say sleep. It said rest, fundamentally different. So this is why this is where Sabbath comes in. Alright? This is where Sabbath comes in. And, and But then Sabbath is only um, the last dimension of that rest. You need, you need to rest the mind, um, you need to rest the body, and you need to rest in Jesus. So it's always going to be three dimensions. So Sabbath rest is the final link in that, in that chain of truth when it comes to rest. So there's where the spirit rests, in, 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 um, the inner man, where you rest and you connect with Christ. Um, uh, on his memorialing of creation, the cathedral in time, temple in time. So, but the mind has to rest, and this is why you come. If we don't follow the, the process as it is, beloved, we still don't keep Sabbath holy, because all it is is the sunset and a new day begin. Mm. But our minds are not at rest. All right, bodies are not at rest, and therefore the spirit can't be at rest. It's holistic. 
So a Sabbath is about the whole being resting. So it, when you look at how the Jews would keep Sabbath, they have shut themselves off, they have cut themselves off, and I'm not specifically recommending to do things the way that they do. Um, but you must make sure you also achieve physical, mental, and spiritual rest. So I don't want to hear nobody's drama on Sabbath. <laughs> no. This is me and Jesus' time. So, <laughs> Call me on Monday. Because Sunday is still recovering from the Sabbath. So you call me on Monday. <laughs> you understand? So you have to set the boundaries so that you can get your rest. Because it's your soul. Because when you're dead, it's you that dead and nobody else. So therefore, in order to enjoy the real blessing of Sabbath, you have to do all of the things that are necessary to ensure that you get your physical rest, that you get your emotional rest, uh, 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 and that you get that spiritual rest. So we only tend to focus on spiritual rest, but thou cannot have spiritual rest separated from the rest of the being because we are all three-dimensional. So do what you need to do. Make it, make it, make Sabbath um, your delight. So get, sit down with yourself, counsel with yourself, and determine what you need to stop what you need to start, who you may need to cut off or ignore just for these two days. Friday evening, Sabbath, whole day. You understand? And um, free, free your own mind because rest is important. Rest is important. So there's things that you need to do to connect yourself with God, to hear God speaking to you. There's a quotation that I've been looking for for a long time. I had it. Forget it. But I heard Bob Trebs. Y'all know Bob Trebs? The old name. That's the old school right there. <laughs> but I heard Bob Trebs. He had spoken. Um, he had said, you know, that sunset is a time where God desires to, 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 to meet with, with young men and so on and so forth for young people and, you know, reveal himself to them. And uh, sunsets are beautiful. There's just something very powerful about a sunset. You want to know why it's powerful about sunset? Uh, I think it's here that I said so, but it also represents the character of God. You want to know how it represents the character of God? It represents the end of one thing and the beginning of the next. And it's only God that can declare the end from the beginning. And so this is why we read in the Bible that Christ came to visit with, um, or in the spirit of prophecy, Adam and Eve in the cold of the day. Sunsets are powerful. See the sunset. Utilize the sunset. Become at one with nature uh, as God intended us to be. Enjoy it. Because there's a word that Sister White used, she still spoke about our artificial civilization. And it's so easy to be blended into this artificial technological age that we just miss everything. Yes, one point. One point that I missed. Um, simple agencies of nature. I'm going to, I'm going to add... Um, I'm going to add trees, stars. We need to be, you need to be among trees. You need, you need it. Your soul needs it. Your soul needs it. Your soul needs it. And we need to look at the stars. You rob yourself. You know, one of the things, one of the recommendations in the spirit of prophecy for children who are worldly. You know what one of the recommendations are? She says, take them in the country. Yeah. Yeah. Take them in the country. Let them be surrounded by nature. It's going to break the spirit of the world from off of the children. You know, I see little children nowadays, boy, they're real. It's been again, been again, been again, been again, been again. Been again. Mm -hmm. And then look at them, they seem so dwarf. They don't interact with nature. So just simply a trip to the country is one of the simple agencies of nature. Go ahead, buddy. Uh, what about I keep you singing? Please go for it. Okay. Uh, what about the, the sound of water? Oh, brother, Kami. Excellent. Mm -hmm. I love the sound of water. Um, but it, it, it calms the nerves. Um, tremendously and it helps to just soothe the nerves, soothe the minds as well. So 
All of these are the natural things that are, because it is at the right frequency. You see, did you see, Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. Earth was made for man and not man for the earth. God built the home before he put the people in it. Therefore, everything that is in the home is for the people's benefit. So everything that is in nature, so when you hear don't go to the sun because it's going to burn you, that's wrong. <laughs> you understand? When you start to hear don't enjoy certain things about nature, I just start to just cut these people. I, uh, uh, you going, you, you going too far left. And so all of this was made for a man. Yes, the sun will burn us and we've got to exercise temperance in it. Um, cover ourselves as uh, dependent upon the time that we're going to be in it. And, but it is for our benefit. Or oh, don't look up at the sun, you're going to go up blind. But I am seeing sure blind. Because I look up at the sun, I look straight in the sun, and I close my eyes, and I can still see the sun in my eyes. But what does it do to my eyes? It actually stimulates lymphatic production flow in the eyes. It brings more blood to the eyes, and it blood circulation to the eyes. Looking in the sun it doesn't damage your eyes. But I've heard that from small. But then I saw some research that shows, no, it doesn't damage your eye. It's good to look at the sun, and it helps to make your eyes less light sensitive so that you don't want to be squinting. You understand? Because when you squint, you strain the muscles of the eyes, and you have some issues. Go ahead. You know, you, you have sand on there, and uh, I was thinking, uh, uh, how could, in this perspective, desert, Your great desert is not really sand. It's dust. It's dirt. Lacking water. Where I live is sand. Sand, but you can dig 10 feet, 12 feet, 100 feet in the ground, you have sand. So what we all guys have in your desert is, is um, it's just dust. It's just dust now for water. But say for instance, see if you if you dig a hole in that sand, in that um, I guess our areas are sandy or what we would call loam as well. Um, if you dig a hole in it and you put the sand back in it and you add water to it and you jump in there, brother, you don't know how much diseases you can correct, multiple sclerosis, paralysis. It's going to you now, um, you have the electrical currents of the pool. earth working through. Uh, you have the drawing power of that sand or of that, um, of that soil pulling stuff out of you. It starts to correct problems. That you won't believe. So stuff that oh, there's no cure for it. As a rule, if there's no cure for it, hydrotherapy or drop them in the ground while they are alive, keeping them alive, not while they are dead. Amen. So that's as a rule. So once you, and you will always find stuff that you don't know what to do. All right, no problem. I don't know what to do. There's no cure for it. Well, let me try this. So we we have done it and um, works wonders, but so 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 like so you mean like like okay going to the beach. Oh, we always do it, brother. Always do it. Always do it. Yeah, it is. It is very therapeutic. But when you do it with soil, no. All right. When you do it with soil, you have um, a more potent drawing force. So uh, some friends of mine, this guy came to him. He was paralyzed. Paralyzed um, from. He was not walking properly or straight or he had to be lifted. Just dug a hole in the ground, brother. Wow. Put him in. Softened the, the soil, uh, mud, put it by just mud. And one week later, this man started walking again. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of stuff that you can do, but you just use the simple agencies of nature. Mm -hmm. See, I don't know how to figure out everything. And it is not to say that you may, you may, you, you, even if we know all the information in the world, uh, the Bible says that we, we still will be able to, we, we still will continue to learn because we never come to the place where we don't know, where we know everything. And uh, so you always learn, you always face the stuff that you didn't know before. But as a rule, that earth over there has more use than walking on, has tremendous use, tremendous use. Uh, it makes a difference. Somebody's hand was not pressed. 
You ain't for me, no, are you? I ain't my boss. You ain't for me. No coming back for you. <laughs> Go ahead, sister. Oh, me? Huh? No, you know, because as you were talking about that, I remember. As kids, when we go to the beach, we would go in the sand. We dig a hole. Yeah, you, we dig, dig a, a big hole. hole. Yeah. And they go. But what, what the warmth of that sand will do is going to balance out um, the body's heat as well. Mm. And uh, balance out the body's heat. And so it equalizes body temperature as well. And if it does that, it's going to equalize body circulation. Because we may be alive, yeah, but they are going to be, they are always, well, they are at some point based upon our style of dress and based on our habits of life, we can limit circulation of blood to certain organs and certain limbs. And so therefore, all of this thing is very balancing and equalizing. All right, so like in cases of people who have autoimmune diseases where the body is attacking itself, um, Autoimmune diseases, especially clay baths, put them in the earth, hydrotherapy, um, fever treatment, they have to reset the immune system. Reset it. It's just a reset button. So God has various resets buttons, and they're found in the same page. This is the nature. My brother over there waving. No, brother, but the girl first. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Well, um, as you're speaking of stones, you know, when we went to visit Sister White home, she had these stones where she would put in the oven like from Friday night mm. and she put it in the bottom of these kind of pan look like ovens mm -hmm. and they'll keep the food hot all day next hour. Yes. What kind of stones are those? Any typical stone man. Oh, okay. Because stone will hold heat. Okay. But they find granite stones or it would, well, not really any typical stone. It can be like limestone, so mm. limestone will lose heat. Right. So uh, in Barbados, our, 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 our structure is like our uh, physical structure the, the island is limestone but um flint rock any any very hard dense rock um w would work even if it's even if it's winter and you didn't get the um <laughs> electric bill paid properly if you left some stones on the um you still will put it in the bed with you you know that the bed is not going to burn yeah. but it's going to give you some heat though so <laughs> that's a little like that <laughs> my brother uh, what about inhaling like flowers Oh, it's beautiful, brother. Is that good for like It's love excellent. Or excellent. Um, and depending on what the flower is, yeah, will also determine the effect it has upon the mind um, or upon the brain, uh, but upon the nerves and upon the lungs. So um, it's always good to go through um, and just smell the flowers. Because whatever the flower is, it has a specific property. So if you go through an orange patch, or a lavender field, you understand, that's going to stimulate muscles, that's going to stimulate the nerves, um, especially where the orange patch is concerned, it calms the nerves, mm -hmm. calms it. You can have uh, hyperactive children, it will calm them, guaranteed. That's a guarantee, <laughs> you understand? Because what the, what the, um, the flowers would give off, because when you smell something, you're smelling you're inhaling the physical substance of the thing that has been broken into molecules now that are floating in the air. So if I smell a dead dog, you're really inhaling dead dog. <laughs> you understand? So um, <laughs> I'm just I'm breathing in dead dog. So you, we, we, when you deal with certain flowers, whatever the natural property of that flower is, you want to get the benefit from it. So um, I've had people that recommend this to people with um, children with um, anxiety, hyperactivity, and they've gone by flowers. And just breathing alone helps to calm the child, helps to calm the person, helps to calm the mind. So these are the natural scents that God has in store for us. Um, God has here for us. On, on that point of scent, um, there are many things that we bring into our home that make us sick because of the scent that comes from it. And it can be the furniture that we purchase. It can be the clothes that we just got from wherever we got it from. It can be the chair. It can be the plant pot. It can be the rug. Based on the material that it is made with, it's still giving off some kind of scent. 
So if you find yourself sick and you, you, you're searching and you don't know what's causing you to be sick, guess what? We also have to pay very close attention to the sense of things because the sense of things in the house, uh, especially if the house is, is closed, there's no direct air flow, you're dealing with central um, air in the, in, in the home, uh, that scent is going to circulate, especially at night, you're going to find yourself in problems. So uh, those are one of the things that you have to take off on your list. If you find yourself, you're suffering with a, like, something reoccurring, you, you, everything gives off a scent. Every single thing gives off a scent. And so we must pay very careful attention um, to the things we bring in the home as well. This is why uh, uh, always have the garbage in the house covered down. And because if you have decaying food in there and your garbage is open, guess what? You're lying out at night while you're breathing in? Decay. That will make you sick. That's going to cripple your immune system. Um, and you'll be surprised how quickly the immune system can go down by simply the sense that we breathe in. So you, you could put on too much cologne. You understand? The wrong kind of cologne. And you realize uh, you can actually cripple your immune system at least for a little while. Uh, uh, we already know the uh, negative effects of um, smoke inhalation. We know hands over that's going to make you sick. All right, because it's compromising your lungs. Uh, once the lungs are compromised, the blood will be compromised as well. So when you're breathing in decaying things, where does it go? It's diffused into the blood. You're breathing in certain chemical agents that the things are giving off. This is why the asbestos root story is a, is a big thing in America. Uh, what means what's the idioma? It's a big thing because you're breathing in that very substance and it is in your blood, it is making you sick. So this is why this is very important. Very, 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 very important. So um, the, 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 the things that we have in our home, the curtains, everything, beloved, everything. Smell it to see if it agree with you. This is why animals... What animals do? Dogs, cats, what do they do? They smell, they smell you. They smell, they, 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 their sense of identification is smelling, they go smell you. Are you going to smell straight? <laughs> Son, something's not right. <laughs> they, they smell your character. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> saints play a real, a real, uh, a big role. Um, in our health. And this is why it's always good to always have a, a solid current of air coming through the home, keeping the home free. It is, it is, it is possible. So it's more than one thing. It's not what herb is going to make me well. Wow. But that's the same thing, you know, from the pharmaceutical industry. What tablet or what drug makes you well? No, we have a system. See, we have been given a complete system of truth. We have been given a complete system of health. All right? All of these things must be taken um, into account. Who time it is? Time is up. Okay. You, go, go ahead, brother. And uh, I don't know if this is better. Just, uh, okay. uh, just to, just to uh, 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 piggyback on, uh, on brother's question, uh, uh, it's causing me to wonder about other things, like you know, air fresheners. Mm -hmm. I can, I can, I can, I can't read out <laughs> because it's like 20 chemicals that can be in our flatulence and uh, they all, some are very carcinogenic, you understand? So we'll be amazed at what our body lets go of. Um, ammonia, indole, skatole, I forget what these, what these do, what, these, what, uh, what they really are, I can remember a few of the names. But there are many different chemicals that are created from food production inside of the body that they need to get out. Um, and when they don't come out, they can make us sick. Gas can make you sick. 
Gas, having gas can make you sick. And, um, and so, it's a kind of oil pumps in. But, for air fresheners, it really is best to use diffusers. Just get some essential oil, mm -hmm. got diffusers all over your house if you want a, a particular scent, because the essential oil is a natural antibiotic. Any essential oil is a natural antibiotic. So it's going to interact um, with whatever is in the air. It's going to be killing some species of funguses, uh, moles, and, uh, and whatever may be floating in the air as well. So the most healthy thing that you can do is invest in good diffusers if, you, if you're really into air fresheners. Other than that, keep the house as open as possible. You know what I mean? Um, I know some people may put, um, will have air filters and so on and so forth. But um, if, if air fresheners, the, the, the most natural, the most, the best thing that we can do if you really want something natural and organic with no side effects is going to be a diffuser and probably essential oils. That, that's actually the best thing. That's actually the best thing. I know there are uh, diffusers. There are um, stuff that you can buy and to diffuse into the home as well, but it can be laced with chemicals as well. So just essential oils, diffuser, you can make your own, you can mix and match. Whatever flavors, there are flavors, there's nice flavors out there, but they're like sushi. <laughs> yes, uh, masculine scent. I like it, you understand? But um, there's a lot of, there are a lot of options that we can have um, organically when it comes to um, creating a scent in the house and that is that is that is beautiful. Oh go ahead brother. Oh we go. So um uh, two things. You say natural scent, so what about with perfume? Is that also would you get natural scents from that or um, I know some people say no perfume because then it You were gonna read the label. Everybody makes their perfume different. You know what I mean? So some, it just depends on the ingredients that the manufacturer put in. Would, would put in. So you know, we know it as an alcohol for sure, um, but it's just what that person is putting in. Put in. So it's just for us to do our due diligence for ourselves personally. Um, but like for asthmatics and people that suffer with sinus, perfume is not going to be there. Um, it wouldn't be wise to be putting on perfume because it just aggravates the sinus more and it aggravates the asthma more. So. They may have to resort to using um, scented oils, um, natural oils. There are alternatives out there. Uh, it's good to have a pleasant scent about you that when people, people can smell you from a distance and you know it's pleasant. Because um, I can remember some brethren, they, they were against everything. They were against roll-on, they were against perfume, they were against this. But you can, let me tell you, you know that they were coming. <laughs> the room quickly smelled like people. And the people were working to <laughs> So you don't know want that. That's not a, a recommendation by health reform. That's health reform. So um, it, it was just, it, it's just for you to do the, your personal due diligence. All right? And the other point that I went to, you know, I, I don't remember where I, found, I, I heard this, but they were saying that in your vehicle now, that because, they, like you were saying, the scent is so very toxic because it's not only the, the, the covering of the seed mm -hmm. is coming through what they put on the dash and all these mm -hmm. other things and they said when you go in if it's in the sun don't put your air condition on right away right that you should let the window down let all right. that toxic let, let, let it let cause it's build up right because there. it's build up because correct. of the heat correct yeah correct so, so that's something else now, what yeah, about I've gotten I've gotten a cold so, so I, I, I clean my car and I you still have to clean my car clean and and um, stick and span when they clean and they clean. So I got in and I put on my new air freshener, the black one. Uh, and um, I had a cold. I got a cold. I started to sneeze, 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 sneeze. It was the air was so saturated with the scent that immediately I had an immune response. And so. Be very careful, so we always need a, a, a supply of air, that, that, that fresh air, to blow things away. You ready for me yet, brother? Uh, I don't have one. Oh, okay, I sorry. I have one now. Uh, <laughs> about, uh, pollen. Is, can we put pollen on ourselves, and does it have a healing property? Yeah, bee pollen has healing properties. Um, 
the pollen has healing properties. So you can purchase bee pollen. Uh, it will help with things like eczema, psoriasis, and there are various other uses for for bee pollen. Uh, if you have, if in spring, uh, spring is where all the um, the hair fever and the allergies start to, to come, is because the body is toxic. So that which is good and existing in nature is making, uh, it's not really making the body sick, but it is having a bad interaction with the body. And so if you're suffering with allergies, it means that you need flushing and cleansing. And once you're being properly flushed, your tissues, your lungs, your bloodstream, uh, your colon, then you wouldn't, you wouldn't um, have the allergy any longer. So a lot of people can't be with the flowers, they, they, they want cleansing. It's just that the body needs to be cleansed as well. And uh, that is it. Um, can I say one thing? Yes. As you talked about flowers, um, I remember someone told me that uh, a friend of theirs uh, was smelling a the flower mm -hmm. and a bug went up. Oh, yeah. So I just want you to always want to look first. <laughs> <laughs> when we start going out trying to smell yeah, flowers, you always have to look heels, first. <laughs> Look first, I always speak first, and okay. Because <laughs> my nose is big, so I'm going to suck it right in there. And I'm not trying to have that, so <laughs> i got to look first. <laughs> but what make about, sure you look first. Go what, ahead. what about people that, you know, like come from the island and come to the United States, all of a sudden they have allergies. What, what, what causes that? Because like, they, they didn't have one, or maybe they didn't know that they had an allergy. Shifting environment and shifting the amount of sun. Huh? The sh uh, change in the environment. Uh -huh. The air over here is drier. So when I'm home, I have a Q tip fetish. So I clean my ear every day. Um, it, uh, my ears are squeaky clean. <laughs> um, but I just have a little fetish of a Q tip cleaning my ear. But when I come here, I don't do it. The air is so dry for me because I'm living in a high humidity area where there's much more moisture in the air. So that will also determine how the lungs function as well uh, because the more moisture content in the air, uh, that could be positive or negative for an individual based upon how their health is. So the quality of air is different, completely different. The air over is much drier. Um, the amount of sun that we naturally are in, in the Caribbean, um, is going to be different. The same sun over here, but people don't have a tendency to be in the sun. Um, and so it is, it is the shift of environment. The temperature is different, the air is different, and the, the, how the sun hits the body is different because it is at different angles. And the elevation is different depending on where they're going all of these things, the body notices the changes. So higher elevations, less oxygen. So this is why their body, sort of people's body will not be able to, uh, or they may not give themselves a proper chance to climatize. And so this is where like red dress reform comes in very handy. So once we dress properly and we're properly covered, we give the body a better chance to climatize to different environments. And especially going places where, uh, because I've, I've gone places in Jamaica where the moisture in the air was thick. You understand? Mandeville and so the moisture in the air was thick, 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 thick. Whereas I didn't have that. So all of these things play a part in the role of the body, in, in, in the way the body um, maintains its personal balance and reacts to it. So that, that, is, that, is, that, is, that is what it is. And there, there, then there are things, if you're going to a new environment, you should acclimatize your body to that environment and to make it happen, uh, Russian steam baths are good for that. When you come into a new environment, you give yourself a steam bath, it opens up your pores, you go and then you climatize to that environment. So if anybody has purchased um, laminate fluorine, you all know what I mean, right? Mm -hmm. The laminate tiles, you can't put them down the same day you buy them. You have to let them acclimatize in the room that they're supposed to go in because there's going to be some tiny, um, expanding, contracting, contracting to suit that environment so that it would um, fit snugly. So uh, a human body is the same thing. We have to acclimatize the environment. One of the things that happens to acclimatize a different environment is going to be either hot treatments or cold treatments. So when it was here in winter, 
it didn't bother me. You understand? Bothered my wife, but it didn't bother me because I was doing hot and cold baths almost every day, and I allowed that cold water to hit beastly cold. That cold water to hit my body after a very hot, long bath. Um, shower, cold, cold, cold. Every day, and so I could have worked outside, done what I had to do outside. It didn't bother me because I allowed my body to acclimatize to it. So there are things that we have to do to allow our body to acclimatize. And when people don't do it, they get a lot of sicknesses, they get a lot of allergies. The body is always trying to is a recovery mode, like a Windows computer. Not that we knock a Windows, but it's a recovery mode. <laughs> um, all the time, all the time, all the time, all the time. And so therefore, the allergies manifest. Um, and it, it, it just it just it just doesn't um, suit them. So, say some person who living in a hot environment going to a cold country to live, they need cold treatments. And so I, I don't know what it was about. I never what, what, what was this? Um, but uh, ice bucket channel? What that was about? I don't know. Mm. Anyhow, mm. but you get a five gallon bucket of ice water and you pour it on your head self head to toe. Mm. You know what that does? Mm. It tones the entire nervous system up. It tones all of the muscles up. It literally makes you strong. Mm. So if people who are not able to handle the cold, they can take themselves through a series of what we call pale pores, and it would make them stronger. So you know, you see those, those Russians and those Polish people mm -hmm. breaking the ice and jumping in the river? Mm -hmm. Yes, there's a way to do that. Anybody can do that. But it's a graduated way that you do it in terms of you keep introducing this cold water to yourself on a daily basis. It strengthens the nerves, it, tough, it toughens the skin, and it strengthens the muscles. And boom, you can go swimming in the lake with the seals and the penguins. That's how you do it. I've been talking for one hour. We're going to take a break, and then we're going to, to um, come back come back after. How, how long a break by the, by the carrier? Five, ten? Yeah. Over ten minutes. Let us say a prayer. Father in heaven, thank you so much for what you have revealed to us, what you have taught us up to this point. We continue to ask for your grace, for your mercy, and for your favor, that you would teach us your ways, that we may be able to walk in them and live in them. Bless us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We're going to take this 10-minute break, and then we're going to...